I used to believe that I knew what misery was. I mean, I read the news. I know about the genocide of African countries and the drugs of South America and the cartels in Mexico, Pablo Escobar, the modern pirates in I don't know where and all of that. I've met homeless people. They know, but they don't know how low a human being can get. The worst part is, for someone to be that low, someone else has to force them into it. Last week, Dad and me went to Aunt Sylvia's house. She died. Dad inherited a lot of her possessions. We had to clean up. So I asked Dad about that room in the back, the one that I was forbidden from entering when I was a kid. He gave me the keys and said, go on, girl, kill a myth from your childhood. I didn't run. I'm an adult now, please. I fucking sprinted there. You don't know how many sleepless nights I had thinking about that room and the mysteries inside. There were two nights. <laughs> anyway, when I entered the room, there was a desk and a lot of papers and a few boxes. My aunt stored stuff she wrote inside the boxes, I guess. Painful poetry about the fear of being outed as a lesbian. Good job, Aunt Sylvia. It's not like I didn't realize you liked girls when I was 12 or anything. But there was something else. One of the boxes had something written on it. Stuff found in the house. I called Dad and asked him about it. He told me my aunt found some stuff in the attic when she first bought the house. So I thought, it must be that. But I opened it anyway. Pretending to have interest in all that crap was far better than taking a broom and helping Dad, I tell you. Inside, there was a... a collection, I guess. Letters. I counted. There were 27 handwritten notes. Every single one of them was addressed to the same individual. Someone identified as Mr. Peckinworth. I didn't have to read a lot before figuring out a kid wrote all of that. The handwriting was impeccable, better than what I can do. But every sentence had the same feel to it. The first group of letters were entertaining. A six-year-old's broken heart, a skirmish with a bee, a barefoot race in the mud. Then, it wasn't fun anymore. The cruelty someone, even another kid, expressed when they mock someone in love the allergic reactions to a bee sting. The punishment faced when entering a house with muddy feet. Oh God, the punishments. As the letters progressed, the age of the writer did as well. At some point, the kid said something that didn't make a lot of sense. I've changed my mind, Mr. Peckinworth. I want to go with you. It was the phrase that substituted the signature, which up to that point had just been the letter G. And some letters later, it was just begging. Begging and promising to do anything if Mr. Peckinworth would take the kid with him. It seems the writer was about 12 when they surrendered. No more begging. No more take me with you. No more anecdotes. Just a request. Always the same request. I want a toy any toy. It doesn't have to be big or new, it just has to be mine. I promise to love him, them, and care for it, for them, as a mother cares for her boss's children. I promise to guard them from all evil, bullies in the streets and snake-eyed toads in the cellars, older siblings in the house and witches in the woods. I promise to keep them company on stormy nights and to cover their ears when the thunder cracks the sky. I promise to be their friend from this moment to my last moment. And Mr. Peckinworth, I know toys aren't alive. I'm not stupid, no matter what Julia says, but they don't have to be alive to be loved as I want to love them. I was drunk 
drunk on the memories of my fucking privilege in my fucking middle class neighborhood with my middle class friends in my private elementary school. I got up and without saying a word, I took a broom and started to clean with my dad. Over the next three hours, we made everything shine as if all the furniture and crockery was brand new. I didn't want to talk and neither did dad. Silence was king for a while. And that's saying something when we're talking about my family. Of course, it didn't last. Once we were in the car, Dad spoke. So, did you find something interesting in those papers? Not much, I said. By the way, does the last name Peckinworth ring any bells? Yeah, he said. It was the man who sold the house to your aunt. His grandfather lived there. Poor man, he had schizophrenia. He passed the days writing, fighting relatives who may as well have been strangers, trying to stop them from reading his work, and then falling asleep. Yeah? So, do you have any idea what he wrote about? Memories of his life, or something like that, Dad said. Gave one last look at the house, took a deep breath, and tried to forget. Alas, forgetting is the best way to remember. For another video, tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget to check the link for our social media descriptions. Sleep well, if you can. (laughs) Ha 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 ha